Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Happy Sabbath to all of you. Happy New Moon to all of you and happy Feast of Dedication to those who are still observing. We are so excited to be here this day. It is so much to be thankful for. It's just so many of these days that are crossing together and we just love it. We have our whole house decorated. Well, our house decorated. I can't say my whole house. My house is decorated. We are in the spirit. It has been a fantastic piece of dedication this last week. So we are sad to see it come to a close soon, um, but we are thankful to be here another day to see another Sabbath. Hallelujah. So this is a day that Yah has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. So since we are so thankful, we have to say in all that ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. So all honor and glory and praise goes to the Most High, Yahweh HaShem HaMashiach, Yahweh Shai. Thank him so very much for this lesson and for all that we're about to go into because today's lesson, ladies, is going to be the Most High's High Holy and Feast Days. So I know that it was um, a, a suggestion. Uh, so, you know, I thought that it might be best um, to bring it out and to discuss um the high holidays i mean it's just you know we gotta i gotta talk about it so first i want to start out with titus 2 3 through 5 so let's go ahead and get your king james version bibles out get your apocryphas out today is going to be precept heavy so please get a notebook and a pen out because i'm it's going to be a different format i'm not going to go through um all of these different precepts um but i'm going to give you the high holy days and the precepts that go with it so you can do your own research so let's start out in titus 2 3 through 5 and it reads as follows the age woman likewise that they be in behavior as become with holiness not false accusers not given to much wine teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober to love their husbands to love their children to be discreet chaste, keepers at home good obedient to their own husbands that the word of yah be not blasphemed so again, today's title is the Most High's High Holy and Feast Days. So um, I want to start out by saying that all of the feast days begin at evening at their appointed dates, on their appointed dates. Um, but everything begins how the Sabbath begins. That's how the Most High begins his days. All of the days are started in the evening that begins a full day. So anytime that you are celebrating any of these high holidays, know that if you see a date, that it begins at the evening of that day, okay? So in this video, <laughs> I'm going to go over if and when you should observe these high holy days. So as, as in when, as in the season. Uh, again, um, and if, the answer if is yes. <laughs> I'll just answer that right out the gate, yes. Um, so I'm not going to go over how, to do that. So I do encourage all of you ladies to do your research of men that are bringing out the truth. And I actually um, did a list in the comment section of the video, Grow Roots in This Truth, Staying Strong During the Holiday Season. So look at that video and I pinned at the top of the comment section a suggestion list of people that my king and I watch on YouTube. So you can kind of go to those videos and you can like type in the search bar of YouTube, like uh, let's say a camp of uh, the Watchmen for Israel. So if you type in Watchmen for Israel Day of Simon or Watchmen for Israel Feast of Dedication, then you'll see a bunch of videos that will come up. Um, but then you'll see that channel that will come up and, and then the title will be right there. So do your research, go into these videos. I encourage you strongly go into these videos and they really do great breakdowns. Um, proper breakdowns on how to keep these high holy and these feast days and what they're for. I'm going to give you, like I said, a quick overview, like a synopsis, like an umbrella, like an overview of a synopsis of what these high holy days are. But again, please do your research with these precepts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, list off the precepts, or sorry, list off the high holy days and the precepts again that follow it. And then some of them I might read, some I might not, because some of them are, sorry, might be longer than others. Um, and make sure you just write those down next to these um, high holy days. And then, of course, go back and do your research. And again, do the watch the videos and learn all the details that you need to learn about why <laughs> and and how. So, um, uh, so I want you to also oh, I want you to also keep in mind that. When you're doing your research, you're going to find that not all camps or individuals that are speaking about these high holy days keep them all on the same days, the exact same dates of the calendar year. That is going to be 
you know, something for Yahweh had to do when he comes back. He's going to make sure it all is in order um, and everything is done decently and in order. But until then, you will see that, you know, certain people might have already done the piece of dedication, like how we're doing it right now. Um, so I'm not going to give you the particular dates because that's my change. Some of you guys that might watch me might be already a part of a congregation and a camp. Um, so the dates I might give you might be dates that don't align with you anyway. So I'm not going to, so we're going to stray away from that. I'm not going to give you the dates, but everybody does the same high holy days. So that is what we're going to be talking about here because those do not change. So what we're doing is we're rehearsing the righteous acts. So, I mean, how are you going to prove yourself to the most high if you're not obedient? Okay. So we're going to start in the book of Judges and go to five and 11. So go back to the book of Judges. And we're going to look at five and 11. And it reads as follows. They that are delivered from the noise of archers and the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Most High, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Most High go down to the gates. So we are supposed to be doing these, supposed to be uh, observing these righteous acts, and we are not supposed to be observing pagan holidays. And that's exactly what he's saying here, that you are supposed to be rehearsing them. We're going to go a little bit deeper. So go to Nahum 1 and 15. And Nahum is in the uh, middle of the Bible, um, and it is after Obadiah, Jonah, and Micah. And then you'll find Nahum. So go to the book of Nahum, chapter 1, and verse 15 reads as follows. Behold, upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings that publish peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feast, perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. And then we're also going to go to Colossians 2. So go to the New Testament. And we're going to go through Colossians 2, 16 through 18. And that reads as follows. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of in high holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Hamashiach. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So this one I really do love because you'll find sometimes people um, that are in this truth might not observe high holy days for whatever reason or they might, um, you know, not observe the new moons or observe um, uh, the Sabbath, you know, at different time points, like, you know, maybe from sun up to sun up, all these different doctrines that are out there in the truth, but you always have to go by the scripture. So that's why I really love what it says that it says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of a new moon or of a Sabbath days because they are a shadow of things to come. So you have to make sure that you are doing them and are rehearsing them and don't let anybody make you feel any kind of way about it. That's what this pretty much trying to say. So we're gonna to go to 1 Kings 8. So that's why I, I wrote, you know, in the beginning of my lesson, um, this video will go over if and when you should observe them. So that's the if, the answer is yes. <laughs> if you should, should I, should I? Yes, the answer is yes. That just brought it out right there in Colossians. So let's go to, First Kings 8, and we are going to read 46 through 49. First Kings 8, 46 through 49 reads as follows. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the mind whether they were carried captives and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness, which is what we're all doing right now. You've, you've sinned, you, you know, have done perversely and you've committed wickedness and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which is what we're in now. 
which led them away captive and pray unto thee toward their land, which is toward the east. So get your compass out in whatever uh, way that is in your house, pray toward the east, because that's our land, that's Jerusalem. And pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen in the house, which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, place and maintain their cause. So that is so beautiful right there because it really does go into, since you've been led away captive, you're in your land of captivity that kind of cuts the doctrine that some people say, well, you shouldn't be observing the high holy days unless you're in Jerusalem. That cuts it right there because you might hear that as you're in this truth, you'll hear different things. That is a good precept to be able to come back or, or respond, I don't want to say come back, be, respond to that person and state that this is saying it right here. Because he says, if you're in your uh, land that you've been taken away to and been carried away captive to, then making sure that you repent and have supplication in that land, which is here in America. And so return unto thee with all thy heart and with all thy soul, soul in the land of their captivities, which led them away captive and pray unto, uh, and pray and let, and led, Sorry, Salakia, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their father. So it just so it just goes into it right there. So make sure you highlight that because that's a good precept for you to be able to kind of meditate on and understand of of uh, being able to kind of see through when you hear different things and different doctrines. You got to be built up in strength in these scriptures. OK, so let's begin. I want to begin with the Sabbath, of course, because the Sabbath is the highest of the high holy days. So I've said that before in my last video, it is the highest of the high. So let's go to Exodus 20, 8 through 11, because if we're going to be talking about these high holy days and feast days, you got to start out with talking about the Sabbath. So Exodus 20, 8 through 11 reads as follows. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Most High, thy Elohim. In it thou shalt do, shall not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maidservant, nor thy, Salakia, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Most High made heaven and earth, the sea, and all, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Most High blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So you want to start out with the Sabbath day. So if you want more of a breakdown on the Sabbath day, then watch a video that I did not so long ago, and it was called Sabbath Rules, Do's and Don'ts. Don'ts. And that's going to show you how to properly observe the Sabbath. So <clears throat> I want to preface all of this by saying something. So, so like, give me one second. If you're on your job and you have any type of PTO, which is paid time off or vacation days, try, if you can, to reserve them for these high holy days. Some of these high holy days are one day, but it might fall on a weekday. Some of them might be for a week long. So if you do have vacation days that are getting built up throughout the whole entire year, then like Passover, then take that whole week that you, that you, you know, want to, um, you know, be at home and observe and making sure that you do these high holy days in decency and in order. Um, so I just wanted to give you that tip. If you can, <laughs> not everybody has the same amount of vacation days. I understand that, but yeah, I mean, we're not in the world anyway. So you're not traveling, you know, to some long week vacation that you're going to be going out of town or something like that. If you can, and you don't have that kind of schedule, you might go out of town with, with your family. I'm not saying that you might not. However, if there is vacation days and PTO days that you can put to that, um, then put it toward those high holy days. Most I would be so thankful that you did. So um, again, you can look at when these high holy days fall as you're doing your own research and, and you figure out the dates dates that go with these days that I'm going to give you, um, then you can see if it's some of those days might fall into the weekend and then might not have to take off, you know, the full week because that's happened to me a lot of the times, so, you know, it might start on like a Friday and then you don't have to take off much except for that Friday. And then a, a couple of days are already getting taken up out of your high holy week that are over the weekend. And then when you come back, it's not, so maybe you took off like three days opposed to like five days. Right. All right. So get your pens, Get your notebooks and start writing these down. Number one, the first one that comes up 
in the Grecian calendar year, but it is the first one, is the destruction of Nicanor. So the destruction of Nicanor is uh, going to be found in the book of Maccabees. So I encourage all of you, where's my Apocrypha, to get this, to get the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha is an extension of the Bible. You can get it on Amazon. I think it costs maybe $10 or something like that. It's super, super cheap. It is so very important to have with your learning. Um, so please, I encourage you all to get this book. Please get the Apocrypha. Um, and then you can go into um, all types of stuff. I mean, it's just so much stuff that's in it from the extension of Exodus to, um, you know, the extension of Esther and Ecclesiasticus, which is the book of Sirach, which has so much wisdom and knowledge. Um, it goes into the first and second uh, Maccabees, which is a Hasmonean dynasty, which is the, the family, the Maccabees. And a, and a couple of these feast days are kept and observed because of wars that they won in these books. So it's good to read these stories. So definitely get the Apocrypha. So we're going to start out with the destruction of Nicanor. That is kept in late winter. So you can write that down. The destruction of Nicanor is kept in late winter. And it's a celebration of the win that the Maccabees had over the Greek prince Nicanor, right? So that's what that is for. That's why it's called the destruction of Nicanor. And it's only observed for one day. So one evening to the next evening. It is found in 1 Maccabees 7. So that entire chapter. But in parentheses, which kind of hits home about the actual um, feast day, is 23 through 29 and 42 through 50. So 1 Maccabees 7. And inside of that, you can also highlight 23 through 29 and 42 through 50. And then also you can go, also it kind of precepts with 2 Maccabees chapter 14 and chapter 15, those whole two chapters. So use your Bibles, guys. Get your highlighter, highlight the entire chapter 14, the entire chapter 15, the entire chapter 7, and read these things. Go into these accounts. This is your history. These are your ancestors. Go into these accounts. And I also want to say that the destruction of Nicanor is not observed as a Sabbath. So it's you want to take off, but it's not observed as a Sabbath. Some of these feast days that I'm going to go over are observed like a Sabbath day. So the same thing that you do on the Sabbath day, you do on these high holy and feast days. But the caveat is, is that you're allowed to cook because it's a feast day. So it's different when it's like, um, like today is a good example for us because we observe, we're observing um, the Feast of Dedication. So to this evening, when the sun goes down, normally, like I always tell you guys, we wouldn't be cooking from Friday to Friday night to uh, Saturday night. But since this is the Feast of Dedication, we're still observing our um, High Holy Day, then we're allowed to cook uh, tonight and we're allowed to cook Saturday morning when we wake up until the evening time. We can wake up and have hot coffee. We can make hot food because you're still within the High Holy Day of Feast of Dedication. So um, when that does happen, then you're allowed to cook, right? So for the destruction of Nicanor, you want to write down that it is not a Sabbath. So you don't have to follow the no cooking, no buying and stuff like that. And I also want to say that for these High Holy Days, for this Feast of Dedication, like this example that I'm giving you right now, even though you're allowed to cook, you still cannot buy, sell or work because it is still considered a Sabbath. So let's say for the destruction of Nicanor, since it's not considered a Sabbath, you still can work, you can buy, you can sell. However, it's not profitable to do so. It's not righteous. So if you can take off that one day, whichever day that falls on, um, off of work and not do anything and, 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 you know, stay home and get into scripture and give him your time on that day, then do it if you can. But if you can't, um, for whatever reason, because you don't have those kind of vacation days or you're saving up to do it for a week long, like Passover, then don't beat yourself up. Um, so the next one I want to go over is Purim. Purim is found in the book of Esther. That's also kept in the late winter and it goes with the destruction of Nicanor. Though these are three days that go together of a high holy day. So the destruction of Nicanor is one day and Purim or the day of Esther is for two days. Um, and that Purim is the celebration of the win over Haman, who was an Amalekite. We know who Amalek is. Um, by Esther and her uncle Mordecai. So if you read the book of Esther, you'll see that it's mainly about her and her uncle Mordecai and them being able to get the win over Haman who was trying to kill um, them and all of the Jews that were residing in that area. So um, that is what the celebration is about. So read the book of Esther 
in the Apocrypha, it's called the rest of Esther, which gives you a lot more detail about what happened with fasting and praying and and uh, more stories about the letters that went out that Haman was, was sending out to all the different um, towns and cities around to be able to talk about the Jews. You know, it's it, it's, it goes deep into it. If you only have the King James Version in the book of Esther, then read chapter nine, read the whole chapter, but chapter nine will go into Purim and that's going to be 20 through 32. Also, the book of, uh, sorry, um, uh, Purim is not a Sabbath as well, just like the destruction of Mekonor. These are not Sabbaths. So, but they all run concurrently. And I want to also say, uh, make a notation to precept in Esther 9, uh, 17 through 19 will reference the destruction of Nicanor. Um, so they kind of precept together. Um, and, uh, uh, write down, um, uh, intertwine them. Esther 9, 17 through 19, like I just said, it precepts with 2 Maccabees 15 and 36. So when you read those two together, you'll be able to understand how the destruction of Nicanor and Purim go hand in hand and how it's a three-day celebration. So again, 2 Maccabees 15 and 36 precepts with Esther 9, 17 through 19. So you want to kind of put that together. All right, moving on. Now, the third uh, high holy day is Passover. So let's go to the book of Leviticus uh, 23. So Passover is kept in the springtime um, and it normally brings in, in the springtime for us, if you're new in this truth, the springtime for us is the new year, which makes sense because it starts in like March. The end of March, like April, is considered the new year for the most high because it's springtime. Everything is opening back up again and it's not in winter like what's coming up now for New Year's, which is crazy that a New Year is happening in the dead of winter. So, you know, that's not the most high. So we want to make sure that you're keeping it in the spring and it is for eight days. So write that down. Passover is for eight days and Passover is for one night and then the Feast of Unleavened Bread run the rest of the seven nights. So to get a background on that, um, you want to read Leviticus 23, 4 through 8. And those couple verses are going to talk about Passover. And what I've done, which is a suggestion that you guys can do, is next to that portion, that was with those block of precepts, 4 through 8, write Passover. You know, highlight all of 23, the entire chapter, because it's all about the feast days. But, you know, block it out. I'm going to give you each block for each one that's in Leviticus. So, Passover, so the first one in Leviticus talks about the Sabbath. So write that out, write the Sabbath next to it. Then the next block, four through eight, write Passover on the, on the side of it on your in your Bible. So when you come back and you reference it at any point in time, you can kind of go right to it when those high holy days come up and you can kind of be a little more specific opposed to trying to figure out where it is in Leviticus 23. Make it easy for yourself, right? These are your Bibles. You don't want them, you know, sitting on the, you know, desk somewhere or sitting on your bedside somewhere crisp and clean. Like get in these Bibles and write down, write them, you know, be in them all the time and start seeing them get a little bit worn because you're in the word. So you also will find more about Exodus, obviously about Passover in Exodus, because that is where Passover was taking place when we were getting taken out of or being um, rescued as, as, uh, as captives in Egypt. And just like you always know, you always hear about Moses, you know, and let my people go. You've heard all of those stories. That goes into the book of Exodus. So read the entire book of Exodus. It is profitable to do so. It is part of the Torah. And it is just so much information about how you've heard these stories, but you really get the actual firsthand knowledge of the plagues that came through, you know, how the Red Sea was parted, all the beautiful history that we have. Read the book of Exodus. And Passover is in 12 and 13. Those two chapters in Exodus, chapter 12 and chapter 13, go into actual Passover. Um, so for Passover, also make a notation, like he says in Leviticus 23, that the first day of Passover um, and the last day, which is the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, again, Passover is only one night because that's when the, the death angel passed over us and went and killed all the people in um, Egypt. That's only for one night. For the rest of the seven days, it's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The last day of that week is also a Sabbath. So the first day and the last day are Sabbath. So you'll see that in Leviticus 23. So make sure that you write that down. All right. And then the next one 
I told you we're going to be going through these. We got to get through them. We got to get through them. So make sure you write in your notes, pause the video, <laughs> whatever you have to do. If you think I'm going too fast, so you can make sure that you have all the notes. Rewind it back and make sure you write down what I'm saying. But we got to keep moving. So the fourth one is the day of Simon. So the day of Simon is kept in the springtime as well. And that is a celebration of Simon Maccabees win over the heathen in Judea. So again, you want to look in the Apocrypha and in 1 Maccabees chapter 13, you're going to read about the day of Simon. I just read on it again last night and it's a beautiful, beautiful um, example of how, you know, our ancestors were so strong and, and, and took back land and were just valiant men. Um, so that is a one day celebration. The day of Simon is only a one day celebration and it is not a Sabbath also. It's also, it's not a Sabbath, right? So write down the day of Simon. And again, do your research. I'm giving you these precepts. You can write this stuff down so you can you can take the time when you, um, you know, are during a Sabbath or any day of the week and you actually read through these entire chapters and, and get into this thing. You know, you want to show yourself approved. You want to study to show yourself approved. That's scripture. So you definitely want to be able to um, show the most high that you're interested in this and this is what you love and your heart is in it So take the time and study on your own and and the spirit will sup with you So it's not just me giving you these precepts and you reading them. You want the spirit to sup with you That's what you want. You want to build your relationship with the most high Let the spirit work in you and be filled with the holy spirit And the only way that can happen is if you are getting into these scriptures and you are doing the work yourself, right? You got to work out your own salvation through fear and trembling so the number five uh, is the Feast of First Fruits, or it's called the Feast of Weeks, or it's called Pentecost. You'll hear all three of those names, but it's the same exact High Holy Day. That's also only kept for one day, and it's kept in the springtime. That is the next one in Leviticus 23. So we are looking at number nine through 22. So Passover was four through eight, and now the block of nine all the way to 22 is the Feast of First Fruits. Um, so you want to write that down. That's also going to lock your precept with numbers 29 um, and 28. So all of Leviticus 23, the high holy days, precepts with numbers 28 and 29. You'll see the same thing. So as you're reading over all of these books, you'll see that the Most High is repeating in the book of Numbers, chapter 28 and chapter 29, everything that he said in chapter in Leviticus chapter 23. So, you know, you can write that stuff down. Um, so uh, Leviticus 9 through 22 and also Acts 2, the book of Acts chapter 2 is also going to go into the Feast of First Fruits. And this is considered a Sabbath. This is in Leviticus 23. It is considered a Sabbath, that one day of the Feast of First Fruits, right? So you observe it the exact same way that you observe a Sabbath day like you'll be doing this evening. Again, it will be a feast day like how it is today on the Feast of Dedication and you're allowed to cook on that Sabbath day. But still, no working, no buying, no selling. All right, so number six is the Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets or the Feast of Trumpets. And that's the next block. And that's going to be Leviticus 23, 23 through 25. So also write, write, write in your little Bibles, Feast of Trumpets. So this is kept in the fall. And that's also only kept for one day. So again, you can uh, read that in Leviticus 23, 23 through 25, or in Numbers 29 and 1. You'll also see it going into it. But again, you know, write that also in your Bible when, when you're looking at Leviticus 23. Like I have my uh, two pages here that I'm looking at right now. Um, right at the top of it, I wrote Numbers 28 slash 29 on both the pages. So I know that when I'm looking at these high holy days here in Leviticus 23, I can go ahead and do the same thing in Numbers 28 and 29. And same thing, number, Numbers 28 and 29, write Leviticus 23. Cross all of this stuff and have notes for all this stuff so you can go back and you can, you know, um, deepen your learning. This is how you get into getting out of the milk, you know, start deepening your learning about your Bible. So, um, again, the blowing of the memorial of trumpets or the feast of trumpets is considered a Sabbath, okay? And it's only for one day and it's kept in the fall. So the next one you want to write down that's in Leviticus 23. The next one after that is called the Day of Atonement. And that's also kept in the fall. So I'm telling you this because 
these are kept in their appointed season. So like I said, when you do your research, you find out these different dates, then you know that you're on the right track because it's going to fall in the springtime. It's going to fall in the fall. It's going to fall in the winter time. So, uh, so you can see that you are, you know, you're, whatever you're finding after your research, it's correct. All right, so write down the Day of Atonement. That's also only for one day, Day of Atonement. Um, and that is a fast. And it is also considered a Sabbath, but it is a fast. So you are not eating. It is not, con it's considered a feast day because it's in here, but this is when you afflict your soul. This is the day that you atone for all of your sins that you have done. If you're new in the truth, through the, in, been in your, in the beginning and you've done all these sins in your past period, or if you're continuing, you know, and you've been in the truth for a couple of years, then you know that you're just in this fleshly body and you still want to atone for your sins. Um, and still have like a little list that you can still come to the most high with and ask for forgiveness for and repent. Um, so that's going to be Leviticus 23, 26 to 32. So right after the blowing of memorial trumpets is the day of atonement and it's the next block. And right there, I wrote day of atonement. So it's 26 through 32. And you'll also find the day of atonement written out in Leviticus 16, 29. So hold 23 and let's go back to 16 and 29 just so I can bring out this preset. 16 and 29 reads as follows. And this shall be a statue forever unto you that in the seventh month on the 10th day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or of a stranger that sojourn among you. So it's uh, for on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Most High. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls by the statute, by a statute forever. There you go. So it's a fast, and you want to make sure you uh, highlight that as well. So I just read 16, uh, Leviticus 16, 29 through 31. So you want to highlight that. Um, and let me see if I need 32. And the priest whom he shall anoint and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in this, he said he would be. Uh, no, you can stop at 31. Yeah, so 29 through 31. Um, so uh, the next one that you want to write down is uh, number eight is the Feast of Tabernacles or Booths, which is a tent. A booth is a tent. So the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths is an eight day celebration and that is in the fall and that is the next block that's in leviticus 23 and that is 33 through 44 and you can write there feast of tabernacles and that goes into it heavy that first day and that last day are going to be a sabbath just like how you wrote down with passover first day last day is a sabbath and it's for eight full nights so when you see these dates again it starts at evening it's going to run that full time and at evening the last one which will make it the eighth day will run into um, the next following day so you want to make sure that you write down um, the first and the last day is a sabbath and it is leviticus 33 through 44 and that is it in leviticus 23. The next one I'm going to go over that we're celebrating right now is a feast of dedication. And that is not in Leviticus 23. That's going to be coming out of the book of Maccabees. So the last one, number nine, the feast of dedication, again, is in this book. Make sure you get the Apocrypha and it's kept in the wintertime. That is also a eight day celebration. Um, and it was a celebration of the win of the Maccabees. And they're rededicating and cleansing the temple from the heathen that had torn down our temple. Um, so that is a win for us, for sure, for all of our ancestors. So we want to celebrate that. And they celebrated that. And we want to keep that day forever or observing those those days forever. So again, that's an eight-day celebration. You can find that in 1 Maccabees uh, chapter 1 through chapter 4. Whole chapters. All of chapter 1 through all of chapter 4. In chapter 4... 45 through 61 you can highlight so first maccabees 4 45 through 61 you can go ahead and highlight because that kind of hones in on the actual celebration of the feast of dedication and also the first day and the last day are sabbath of that as well it kind of mimics the feast of that sorry feast of tabernacles and it mimics um uh the passover of how these are all celebrated right so if you want to look in the King James Version Bible about if uh, it is, you know, righteous to celebrate that day, then you'll find it in John 
10 and 22, and uh, Yahawashai observed it. So let's go to the book of John and let's bring it out. So the book of John 10 and 22 reads as follows. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Yahushai walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So John 10, 22, and 23. He goes and shows you that Yahushai was still keeping the feast of dedication while he was here. So even though you might read it in here, it, like I said, it's an extension of the Bible. So you'll still see that the feast of dedication are and the day of Simon and Purim, these are days that were given to you by the Most High because of what your ancestors did. But they are still outside of Leviticus 23, but you are still to observe them. So that is all nine of the feast days um, and high holy days. So the last one, while I'm going to end this video, is going to be talking about the new moon. They are also very important. So the new moon, um, let's talk about it. So the new moon are observed for one day. And they are the celebration of the Most High bringing in a new month. So the new moon is going to be a commemorance of it beginning a new month for the Most High. They are also observed like a Sabbath is observed. So let's go to Amos 8 and 5 and let's bring that out. So the book of Amos. And that is right before Obadiah. So Amos 8 and 5, oh, was that 5, sorry, uh, 8 and 5, here we go. Um, 8 and 5 reads as follows, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small, and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit? Um, so that's pretty much telling you that the new moon is observed like a Sabbath day. That's why they're saying, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? Because you're observing it like the Sabbath day when you don't buy and you don't sell anything. So I wanted to bring that out. So, um, but you can cook because it is a feast day. All of these new moons that you'll find, you'll find when you're uh, doing your research and you find the dates of the high holy days and the feast days, you'll also find dates of the new moons as well. Um, so knowing that it's a feast day to you. So it's like, like last night, actually. Last night was December 22nd, which goes into today at sundown. So this is considered the new moon if you're following the calendar that we're following. Um, and we are very excited that we're celebrating the new moon. <clears throat> so lucky that we're celebrating the new moon and we can cook. Um, so you can, you're observing it like a Sabbath, so we ain't running around doing anything, but you can um, cook for this feast day. So let's go into more about the new moon. Um, so let's go to Isaiah 66 and 23. All right. Isaiah 66 and 23 reads as follows. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all the flesh come to worship before me, say of the Most High. So he makes sure that in the Bible, he talks about the new moons. You'll see it written a bunch of times from David talking about it or it being the book of Judith or it being, I mean, it's just all over the new moon. And it's, this is in Isaiah. The new moon is written all over. They are very important to the Most High. So you want to make sure that you are celebrating them and making sure they are just as important as every other high holy day because they are. So let's go to Sirach in the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus 43. All oh, praises opened up to 35, very close. So, Sirach 43, and I'm going to read 6 through 8. And it reads as follows He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. For the moon is a sign of feasts, a light that decreases in her perfection. The month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. So I wanted to continue to bring out a couple more precepts that just kind of back up observing the new moon. So let's go to the book of Ezra here in the King James, and we are going to read three and five. So the book of Ezra three and five, and it reads as follows. And afterward offered the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons and of all the set feasts of the most high that were consecrated 
and of every one that willingly offered a free will offering unto the Most High. All right, and then two more, and then we're gonna finish this video out. So go to 1 Samuel 20 and five. So 1 Samuel 20 and five reads as follows. And David said unto Jonathan, behold, tomorrow is the new moon that, and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat, but let me go that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at evening, because he was running from Saul at that time. Um, and Saul was um, giving him a hard time, but he still wanted to make sure that he sat with him um, during the new moon and during that feast. That's why he said, and David said unto Jonathan, behold, tomorrow is the new moon that I should not fail to sit with the king at meat. So M-E-A-T, like meat, like sitting down and having a feast. All right. And the last one we are going to go to is in the book of Genesis, first chapter, and we're going to read 13 through 18. So the book of Genesis 1 and 13 through 18 reads as follows. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And the Most High said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the time from the night and to let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And Yah made two great lights and light and greater light to rule the day and lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And Yahweh set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And Yah saw that it was good. So with that, I want to say thank you so much for watching. I love all of you guys. I hope this was edifying to somebody that you learned about the high holy days, you learned about the feast days, and that you were able to write down all these notes. I pray that you're going to go over all of this, take the time to be able to research on your own. Again, go to uh, the video that I have uh, that is uh, Grow Roots in This Truth, Staying Strong During the Holiday Season. Look in the comment section of that. And I wrote down suggestions of people that my king and I follow um, on YouTube um, so we can kind of get into the word and, and get breakdowns and stuff like that. And, and if you look up some of these um, videos or some of these uh, gentlemen that are bringing out the truth, then you'll find them going more into detail about these high holy days. So learn, get into it, you know, do your own research for yourself, get into this truth and into the most highest high holy days, celebrate them with, with gladness um, like we are. And it is such a joyous thing to come out of these pagan holidays and come into these high holy days. So happy Feast of Dedication, everyone. Happy New Moon and happy Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom.